What If Season 2, Episode 1 Thoughts. This episode is called What If Nebula Joined the Nova Corps. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely love this episode. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. Yeah, um, so this is a really... I, I've always loved the noir genre. This is an excellent entry into it, you know, and and like other recent MCU, it stretches what the MCU can do. Now, technically, this might not be canon, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting it to be, but yeah, I it's, it's very cool that, like, by the end of this episode, we know that in this part of the multiverse, the Nova Corps become corrupt when that was, like, they were the the arbiters of, of good in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, compared to them, the the Guardians themselves very much stood out as, as anti-heroes. So, yeah, um, instead of just repeating myself over and over, um, almost everything I say in this video is going to be pointing out elements that are in a lot of noir. So, yeah. So, so, yeah, we have the the voiceover, the corrupt cops, though I, I'll acknowledge that we don't technically, the fact that, ah, I can't, I cannot remember his name, but the, the guy who voices Darth Maul, you know, that character, the fact that he's corrupt is only revealed fairly late in the episode, but there's a pretty strong hint at it here very early on. And, yeah, it's raining, there's a murder mystery, and I love the way that we go, we smoothly transition from Uatu's, the Watcher's voiceover, to Nebula's, and, and yeah, you know, not surprised that Karen Gillan can, can pull this off. I gotta see her in, in stuff that isn't MCU, I, I, yeah, I would really love to. Um, certainly the, the... I hear good things about the Jumanji movies, and I can't believe I'm. Yeah, hold on, I'll I'll have it momentarily. The uh, let's see. I'm not currently planning on on Doctor Who. I, f I feel like it would be kind of weird to start that late in Doctor Who. And yes, I know you can technically start whenever. I I like to go to the very start. Oculus. I would very much like to watch Oculus. Um, DSD can make it look really, really cool. So yeah, um, the 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 fact that she can pull this off, this kind of noir. Yeah, not surprised, but still glad to see it. And great use of like these colorful metaphors. The thing, you know, redemption always starts in the darkness, but if you look hard, you can find the light, kind of thing. And, yeah, the the redemption. And, yeah, I thought it was very clever, this element. So this is not a specifically noir thing, but this idea of the, the shield, of how... Yeah, so bringing it back to noir, you know, it's a, it's a cool sci-fi concept. Bringing it back to noir is this thing of something that seems like it would help actually ends up being a detriment. Like, everybody wishes that the shield could just open... But they also know that that would, you know, leave the door open for invasion. So it's this thing of, you know, you you understand why it's that way, but you wish it could just change, kind of thing. You know, there's yeah, that's in a, a lot of noir stories. And this thing of the the misdirect. So I love the, you know, Nebula is like the, they were so busy looking for the weapon, the the killer's weapon. They should have been looking for the victims. They were very, very clever. And the whistle on the recording, you know, and we knew, we've seen before, you know, Nebula records, she's got like a, a camera in her eye, records everything she, she sees. She had an interaction with him and he whistled. So, it's, yeah, very, very nicely done. And, yeah, the line, what did you get into? You know, excellent, yeah, classic. And, and the deadpan wit, you know, there's a, um, the, the, yeah, the line, you know, pleasure was all mine, you know, it's, yeah, very, very noir, and, yeah, and the line, you took a chance on me, I won't forget that, 
and yeah, we have the ticking clock. <clears throat> this thing of you know within twenty four hours, the 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 shields will fall. You know, or or wait, no, I think at that point, right at that point, she just said the, the you know the 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 leader of of the the Nova Corps says you know within twenty four hours something really bad will happen to the planet of Xandar, and. Yeah, you know, someone got involved with the wrong people. And Nebula goes in even though she doesn't have a warrant. Does that mean it's unwarranted? And yeah, some really fun cameos and great atmosphere in the in the club. Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. the Duck. And yeah, and the the, the you know the fact that you've got this tells me that, you know, what was it? Yondu turned a paler face of blue, you know, so this thing of, you know, if you have this, that means that this other person is dead. And, you know, like, how incongruous is that with how the MCU has been, you know, before relatively recently? I, I love it. I love them taking chances like this. And, yeah, there's history between, that's also, like, I seriously respect that they're, they're making Howard the Duck an actual, like, character. Like, he was kind of a punchline, you know, when we first met, when we meet him in, in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, he's basically just a punchline. It's basically, like, es essentially, like, Disney is saying, we can put whoever we want you know, we can take the most obscure, most hated, like, people who read the comics love Howard the Duck. The, the Howard the Duck comics love Howard the Duck. People who only watch movies hate Howard the Duck on account of the abomination that we got, the, the live action, like, my god. Um, honestly, Movie Bob does a really great job summing up the biggest problems with that movie. But, but yeah, you know... And and then yeah, he has like one joke. Yeah, in in Guardians of the Galaxy two is like you know once you go duck, you're out of luck. You know that's also so. But now like in what if he's a character? He has personality, and and this and I love him as like a crime lord. Just because because it works. You know you can do that with this character. You know like you'd have to really change a lot about Steve Rogers for him to be a, a crime lord, but, yeah. And, yeah, they realize this is all about the S.H.I.E.L.D. code, and I love this thing of, you know, the, the fact that, literally, it turns out by the end of the episode, the, the Xandarian, the, the, Nova Core lead, Nova Prime, I think is her name, you know, she actually, she's behind the whole thing, and she specifically, you know, she hired the protagonist, you know, the, yeah, the antagonist hires the protagonist in order to accomplish their goals whilst saying they're doing it in order to, to solve this thing, you know, which, again, very noir. And... Yeah, there's a, a jail visit, and yeah, great to see Yon Rog again. Now, um, it's not on the it's not on the IMDb, so I'm not sure, but it does sound to me like that is Jude Law returning. And yeah, you know, I've I've seen Jude Law in a bunch of things. Not surprised that he absolutely nails this performance. But again, great to see it. And yeah, the protagonist is using unusual methods, is amoral. I and and I really love that, you know, the the thing, you know, was was this your plan? Give me a little more, give me some credit. And you know, she she does the thing and it opens all the, the prison doors, and yeah, the prisoners are happy to to take out prison guards. They've probably been abused by them, so you know, and that's also this noir thing of turning the tables of of giving back some power to criminals that have had the power taken away by lawmen. And, yeah, I like the the reversal of, you know, give me some credit. And, let's see, yeah, and, and she plugs in. I will probably never tire of seeing Nebula, like, 
directly interface with machinery like this. I really love that, like, for sometimes the MCU can, can be very safe, but the fact that she gets to be this kind of, like, because it's, it's kind of creepy, you know, to, to think about, you know, the, the, someone we think of as a person can interact with, like, can, can plug in wires, you know, like, it's at its most extreme in Infinity War when she's, you know, being pulled apart in order to, to torture her, and yet she's still alive. Now, then we have the, yeah, and, and Yon-Rog backstabs her, but we find out later she knew that was coming, and the, the thing overheats, she has to pull out the, the wires, luckily her pull-out game is not weak, and yeah. Jan Rog is indeed working with Ronan, which is this the, it's great because like the moment that he agrees to work with her, we think, oh, that's so ironic. He's technically going against Ronan, even though they used to be on the, you know, yeah, on the same side. They're they're members of the same species, you know, fighting for the same planet. But, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. This is the only way he's gonna get his freedom. But then it does reverse, because that's the thing, like, the moment we saw him, we were like, oh, right, because he and Ronan usually work together. It's very, very nicely, great misdirect and, and reversal there. And, yeah, she gets away from the explosion, and, yeah, the setup is also in a lot of noir. And I love that, you know, the oath come, comes up. And that was how, you know, just, yeah, um, you know, this thing of, you know, you broke the oath, and that, that was when I, when I knew that you were betraying me, kind of thing. And, yeah, a nebula is beaten, but does manage to, to fight and run. Am I the only person who got kind of an Oni vibe from the fight right after that? Yeah, is that because I'm... The only person who remembers that Oni, the video game, even exists. Yeah. And then we have the... Yeah, and she passes riders, and we have this thing of, you know, a cop being... You know, a former cop being treated as if they were still a cop by people who hate cops. And... Right, and we also have the... the yeah, and so... Yes, the person in charge being corrupt, and yeah, the, the, it goes all the way to the top kind of thing, and bigotry towards a minority expressed by characters in the story. I'm pretty sure when the writers, okay, the, yeah, this is credited with being written by Matt Chauncey, if there was no one else in the writing room, he must have high-fived himself when he realized that he could straight up do a rock, paper, scissors. Like, we already had rock, paper, scissors jokes in, you know, Korg. One of the first things he says is a rock, paper, scissors joke. But now it's literally, no, that, you know, rock, paper, scissors, because he's the rock, the, the scissors is a meek with the, with the blades, and the, the paper... Is, is Groot, because tree, you know, paper is often made from trees. Very nicely done. And this thing of, you know, they're playing rock, paper, scissors, and then you have the thing of, okay, technically I play paper, but my paper is made of rock because I am, so, you know. Which, like, I seriously respect, because that's... I think everyone who played rock, paper, scissors as a kid, if you played it with enough people, you definitely ran into at least one kid who was trying to cheat his way out. You know, he was like, okay, okay, yeah, I played this thing, and technically yours beats mine, but, you know, and those kids grew up to be lawyers. And the, the, yeah, you know, she, she talks about, you know, oh, I just, I just need a drink or something like that. It's just, yeah, again, a great, you know, that's a problem. Those aren't meant to pay out. 
and yeah, the the you know guns comes up, and yeah, you know the the protagonist has to really convince you know this this like crime person to to help with something illegal kind of thing also in a lot of noir and I love that he like he's not pretending like he doesn't have access to them he's just making sure that he gets something out of this you know because he says if I had guns which I'm not saying I do I certainly cannot guarantee you that I have high you know what was it heavy artillery guaranteed to kill but hypothetically if I did, what would you give me for it? You know, kind of thing. And yeah, she she puts the the rooster thing on so she can control the arrow even better. Very cool when they break in to the Nova headquarters, and it looks like they're too late, but the What's the word? Um, the um, um, yes, the the um, yeah, it's, you know the the shield starts to open, but Nebula changed it. Machine to machine, so that it closes and it destroys Ronan's ship. Very clever, because because yeah, like. We know the ship can't fly extremely fast. We saw that in Guardians One. You know, it's not really made to. You know, it's a it's a battleship. It's it's tough, and it's got strong weaponry. That's the the advantage of it. You know, and you know, and that was why we were afraid of it. We were worried, like, oh, if if the ship comes too close to Xandar, it will quickly destroy, but then that's the weakness, you know, just, yeah. Very nicely, and... <laughs> you double-crossed me, actually. I triple-crossed you. And... Yeah, she brings up, you know, you broke the oath. You betrayed the law! And... Korg Hulk Loki smashes the the two of them and we have the the bit again about how he's very you know he speaks very softly which was apparently something Taika Waititi really wanted for that character according to I want to say it was an interview he said it and yeah they're they're fighting in in this vehicle and you know despite everything Nebula is willing to, to save, you know, the, the villain is given a chance to, to come back, but the, the, you know, their wicked nature dooms them. You know, if she hadn't tried shooting Nebula, she would have been saved. She'd probably you know, rot in a cell, but she would have been alive. And the, let's see... Yeah, and at the end, the voiceover comes back, and we have the thing about, you know, it's, you start in the dark, but, you know, you could make it into the light. And, and you know, the the shield opens, and the light, and, you know, one of the, you know, at least one Nova person takes off the helmet to really appreciate the, the natural light. <laughs> and Howard calls Nebula Supernova, which is an actual, you know, in, in the... Yeah, in the comics, there is a, a supernova, which I, let's see, um, oh, maybe there's more than one, there's at least, let's see, Garthon Saul, and we've seen Denarian Saul, is he also supposed to be a super, supernova, anyway, um, yes, so, yeah, really, really love this episode. Um, I'm, I just, yeah, so glad that this show is back because this is just this is so much fun. I love sitting down to watch an episode and having no idea exactly what's going. On. Like, essentially, the one thing you know is that it's going to have something 
you know, there, it's going to use characters, settings, and such from the MCU. But it's not even always, like, you know, when, when the very first episode of Season 1 came out, we were like, oh, they're just going to redo the movies, just slight changes, because that's what they did in Episode 1, which I still consider a proof of concept. It was basically just to reassure people, don't worry, not every episode of this is going to be extremely weird. And then, you know, right after they do, you know... To Charlord um, heist story, you know, like the the I think that was the segment. Hold on, uh, this will not stand. Yes, To Charlord is the very second episode, and it it's not the story of any of the movies. They just take characters and they tell a completely new story. You know, love that, and and yeah, the same thing here. This this episode story is not in any of the movies. There's not there's nothing even remotely like this. Like, if, you know, this is this is a noir story with with MCU garnish. Just yeah, absolutely love it. Um, this this could easily have been like a you know bogey Bacall kind of thing.